welcome back everybody. Well today we're going to take a look at a servicing and uh, general clear out for poor old 37073 that arrived with me back in 1985. Now I think I gave her a bit of a service in the year 2000 um, but she was um, a gift from a friend of my dad's. I think it was second hand. He used to have a model shop and her catalogue numbers are 369 and they were released over four years, 1980, 81, 82 and 83, and this is a 1980 model. So it's a good few years old now. It used to run really well. Now there was something that was always very puzzling to me. And I'm just going to bring someone in to assist us. Right. Here's a Viatrains 37401. And I just want to concentrate on the bogies for a moment. Try and get them both in focus. Can you see the Vitrains model is absolutely correct as far as I can tell. But the Hornby model, I have to go in closer, I think. There we are. To me they appear to be class 47 bogies, I'm not sure, uh, I can't see a 37 ever running with 47 bogies. And there we are. Now perhaps as an indication of the work to do, 37073 and 401 are both on the same power track and look, she don't move at all. We'll just take 401 out of the way. So let's ramp up the power. Give her a full bit of power and see what happens. Ooh, buzzing. Oh. So she's in a bad way. I think that's to be expected really. So what we're going to do is pop her open and go through a general service on this type of motor. I've done the Lima ones as you know. But let's, let's do the Hornby one and see how we get on. Okay, I've got her open. That usual clip together with uh, an odd clip at the front end. Now as you can see in my misspent youth I filled her battery box with lead and even placed a large bit there directly over the motor. That's an awful lot of weight in that body and then there's loads more here. I think that's too much these days. Um, it was obviously designed to get traction but it could cause bearing wear so I will be removing at least probably the big lump if I can and uh, let's just turn this round here's the motor it's got a little bit of grease on it as you can probably see but we'll strip that right down and see if we can't get her running nice and smooth now then traction tires see she's got two there and there they feel a bit hard but they're not slipping I was wondering if this might be the video where I show you how to use bullfrogs or not but uh, maybe not we'll, we'll have a look at them a bit later on once I've had a chance to clean everything up so I'm going to begin stripping her down let's just show you it's uh, ever so easy to get these old motor bogies in and out of the frames they are literally a clip in job remove the brown wire from there that goes to the back bogey and then just push that you see that one you push him in and it drops out all right the motor can be stripped apart in a similar way screwdriver at the front and lever forward you see there's a clip there so we carefully want to get that out without snapping anything ah no first thing the wheels center wheels are not held in place by anything they just sit on the axle that <laughs> oh, let's put them there so we're now getting to grips with that it looks no it's moving freely enough but there's clearly going to be a good good cleanup required now the first thing i'm going to do is get the gears out that's very simple you just lift the arm of that off the gear on both and as you can see it pops out very readily keep it that way up in your store box 
and the gears can now be removed. They need a good clean up and a check out. Now, because they're incredibly greasy, I'm going to use some of my trusted IPA, which is okay for cleaning non conductive contacts up. A few little bits everywhere. And then we'll just work on round with that toothbrush. Yeah, so you can see them up coming off. Right then, one of the jobs with a sharp cocktail stick is to just go between all the teeth that you can't reach with the toothbrush. Be surprised how much hard muck has ground into them over the years. Then we want to check for any unevenness on the wheels. Now on these, there was a little moulding sprue that proud, where it should be nice and smooth like that side. So now it's done on both sides, so make sure there's no chance of that causing uneven running. So those gears are done and clean, into the tray they go. Okay, we're now with the motor. Now, stick your fingernail in the spring, and then lift. And it gives you a chance to catch the spring before it goes and lands on Mars. There he is. Quickly get him into the store tray. Same with this side, stick your finger now on the spring, or just easing him out, and quickly into the stall tray, so as he can't escape now. Are the brushes loose? No, they're not. So we are going to have to dismantle a little bit more. It looks like that will have to come off there. Yes, look. Just easing it away, and at the bottom, yeah, that feels like there's some clips they're giving. And away comes the front. Uh, revealing a rather grotty looking commutator. Plenty of meat on the brushes. Well, that comet is going to need a really good clean. And as will the brushes. Now this, I think we'll just pop that into the IPA. And give that a clean in a minute. Right, so... You heard me say that IPA is good for non-contact surfaces. Uh, something big going to be announced on that soon. But to clean my commutator, I'm using a little bit of lighter fluid. It's very pure. I think it's hectane, I'm not sure. You don't want to use anything abrasive and nothing that you can't be absolutely sure of um, fully evaporating and leaving the commutator. Now this will evaporate really quickly. You don't want to put abrasiveness on the commutator because it's, it's designed to slip, the brushes slip on it and all the time you've been using your loco your brushes have been polishing the commutator nicely. So if you use an abrasive on it, like a fibre pen or whatever, like something like that, then it will mark the commutator and it won't be smooth and then you'll get more muck building up into it. You can see how much has come off. I've completely loaded that so it's a little drop more. And give it another clean. Quite surprising, isn't it? I say that will fully evaporate and it will also help prevent a little bit of arcing. I mean, you're going to get some because as the gaps go around, as the motor switches coils. But that's what your commutator should be like nice and clean, dark and not abraded at all. Now I'm going to do the brushes, I'm boring so I won't show you that bit. Well right, done, so we've done the commutator. Now, using IPA this time, I'm going to clean round all the pivots where the uh, gears sit and make sure they're absolutely clear of muck. 
an old lube. The more we get off, the better it will be, so take your time. And then come at it with a toothbrush as well. Right, so we are now looking at the wheels themselves. So similar really, toothbrush to clean between the teeth, bit of IPA, and that will get them nice and clean. Right, I uh, shall now start reassembly. Everything's been cleaned back, so we are ready to reassemble. First thing to do will be to put the front plate on. I'll give that a good clean, made sure I cleaned the um, brush holders really thoroughly. And uh, we're ready to start. So the first thing I need from my spares or from my store box is the little pin that just pushes through and holds one of the wheels and he fits in there like that and I'll probably do this on speed up so that it doesn't bore you too much and we'll just put it all back together bit by bit So everything's been reassembled, it doesn't feel too bad. So we're going to use two types of lubricant, Lavelle 102, which is a synthetic, really good, and that is going to go under that gear there, that's the main dryer spindle. It's also going to have a drop there and there, and there, and there. And then we're going to slide a little bit down, I don't know if you can see that, on the spindle. Where those gears pivot. Oh, pivot, they run, don't they? I know what I mean. We're going to do our axles. Back to back's a little bit tight on these, but I don't want to risk um, breaking the plastic centres of the wheels by adjusting it. Well, she always used to run alright, so I'm thinking probably she still will. So that's those bits re-lubricated. Now my chosen lubricant for the gears themselves is Hobby Lube uh, Premium Gear Lube. This is where I get very sticky. Let's see if can you see that it's so difficult working on the camera so we're just going to put a little bit around the gears particularly on the gears that join to them it's all coat half of each gear with the hobby lube and then it will distribute itself What we could do is wire it up. All right, I've got it connected up. Get my fingers out of the way. Oh, there it goes. There is life in her yet. And you'll see all that lubricant will now distribute itself where it's required. Hopefully not too much on the traction tires, but we'll give all the wheels a clean once it's all back, back together. And we'll just wipe up any excess that appears
don't take it off too much off the front of these because it'll help when it runs against that spring retaining clip. That seems like it could do a nice slow run look. A little tip, when you're putting the brushes back in and the springs, you shouldn't crush these down, these um, retaining clips down as much as they can go. What you should be able to do is see gaps between the coils of the brush springs. See like that? Uh, see if we can get it in the camera that side. So you should just be able to see gaps so that the brush is not being rammed against the commutator too much, which will cause it to wear both the commutator and the brush far too early. Trailing bogey just unclips from the chassis as you saw before. Now very typically this is full of dust and dirt and it feels like it's dry as a bone. So we're going to give it a good clean out. For the video I wouldn't necessarily do that but we'll do it. There we are. Release the clip again and you can see it's um, very simple affair indeed and there's our wheels so I'm going to go ahead now and clean out the bogey frame make sure the wheels are all cleaned and uh, re-lubricate amazing with that black paint on there how it um, can be conductive anyway it obviously is notice here though you've got um, options for inner and outer which would allow it to do different bogies at different locos I presume. Right out, we're ready to oil up. Now we're going to use another lubricant. Very rarely do I use this one. It is Pico Electrolube. Um, I might be called that. Now I think it is. It is, a, it is a lubricant but it's also a cleaner. So we're going to have a very small drop in each of the bearings. And that will just help with conductivity to the axles. All right, we've reassembled the training bug. Now, can I show you one of Hornby's strange anomalies? Well, certainly for the older locos. And that is this off-centered bogey pivot. I've never really understood why they do that. Um, because you would think it would make it lean and certainly my old class 25 did and I removed it and put one in the center which made a lot better. You wonder why they did do that. One of the things to remember when reassembling is all the pivot points should have a tiny little bit of lubricant as well and it really is just a drop and that'll be the Labelle 102 just so that the bogies can pivot smoothly in their sockets. But yeah that's strange that. Does anybody know? why they do this off-centered thing put it in the comments below i'm sure there'll be lots of people that would be interested so it's all nicely assembled final job is a bit of a wheel clean now we will begin using the lighter fuel to do this and we'll do these obviously have to do them by hand because they don't turn on their own So using this lighter fuel will actually reduce the amount of time you have to clean the wheels and track. It's interesting, isn't it? I wonder why that could be. There's something sneakily scientific going on, which will be in a future video. Don't worry, you won't have to use lighter fuel if you don't want to. Right, I'm now going to clean the others, but where I will not use the lighter fuel is on the traction tyres because that can have a detrimental effect on rubber and neoprene. Uh, back to the old IPA for them, but for these, lighter fuel will be just right. Okay, first run since, I don't know, 2000 or so. Ooh, a little bit lurchy. We'll wait for some of that oil to work in, I suppose. Let's have it the other way.
Yes. I think she needs a bit of a run. But I can't help comparing her with the Viatrains one. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't pick out her handrails in silver as well. What do you reckon? Well, it sounds like a tractor, doesn't it? Okay, so not running as well as I'd hoped, but I suppose that's just the limitations of the model. I noticed that one of the gears is running very close to the back of the pinion. Anyway, uh, I've silvered the handrails, as you've seen. I've used my lining pen to do that. I've um, attempted to yellow out the black clip that sticks through the front of the nose there. I'm not sure if it looks better with yellow paint on it or go back to black. Anyway, it's time to take her down to the railway and see how she gets on. As you can see after a little bit of a run, she became even more smooth and has a really nice powerful growl about her and uh, is able to haul a reasonable length of train as you can see again. The uh, video was a little bit longer than I'd hoped for but uh, hopefully I've covered some bits that will be useful to other people. So how about now a little bit of history about the real 37073. She was new to traffic in September 1962. and. Uh, in 1971 she was modified to dual braking system uh, again in 71 she was allocated to march depot and then 1973 she went to saltley again in 1973 she went back to march now important for us on the 2nd of february 1974 she was renumbered to 37073 having originally been 6773 then in the 4th of January 1976 she was allocated to Gateshead. Sadly on the 31st of March 2003 she was withdrawn and condemned and on the 1st of April 2003 she was scrapped and broken up in Bury. Now the head code 8H22. 8 is a through freight or ballast train able to travel at more than 35 miles an hour. The H may refer to Manchester or Inverness or may be a local code and the 22 is the number of trains over that route. Okay, take care now, bye.